Belfast 43. Man, I don't recall a more hated on campaign ship in recent memory. Well, except the Flander five weeks before. <laughs> but even comparing the two ships, I think Belfast 43 is a much more difficult ship to play. So today I'm going to share some tips on how to get the most out of your new underwhelming campaign ship as we break down this gameplay in the background. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Alright, so let's break this video down. For starters, we'll give you some build ideas that you can use for your Belfast 43, and then we can break down the cruiser play in this background play by play. For my long-term watchers, bear with me. I might get kind of basic in this video, but the more that I play this game, I see players sailing around that have zero concept of how to actually win games and do what they're supposed to do. For instance, why didn't I just sail right into A cap right now? Well, we'll get to that. So the builds. The modules are aiming systems, rudder, concealment, and main battery mod 3. The AP shells and torpedoes are not great on this ship, forget about them. Build for HE damage and fires. That means Bruce Fraser with Burn It Down and Igniter. Also, you have one of the slowest stock reloads of any 152mm gun cruiser, so I do actually recommend refill station. More on that later. Inspirations. Lots of directions you could go here. Makawa and Swirsky got my concealment down to 94 B-43 has the third best stock concealment of tier 7 cruisers, so capitalize on it. Another option, keep Makawa and trade Swirsky for Membelli, and that can drop your reload to 7.4 seconds, and that puts the HE DPM at a semi-respectable 238,000. Other players have mentioned Tirwit in my comment sections with the Smogathon build, where you can basically be permanently smoked the entire game. Anyways, do what works for you, moving on. Domination is going to be the perfect game mode for Belfast 43. She has a lot of tools that can help your team win objective points and kill those pesky destroyers. That is your main job. So over here on A cap, we have an Akazuki and then a Shiritsuyu is also spotted up in the cap. Now the Akazuki has decided he wants to try to gun down um, a Suzuya and a Belfast 43 in open water. So we're going to get him out of the match really quickly and then look back to the Shiritsuyu. Now our Fletcher, our div mate, is in a little bit of trouble right now. So we are going to back up and try to use our radar to spot the Shiritsuyu. Always pay attention to your radar ranges. A helpful tip that I find is to zoom in and use the little distance calculator on your scope, for lack of a better word, to find out how far your radar is going to reach. But we're going to risk a little bit of our health to get the Shiritsuyu spotted and try to get him out of the match. So we take one shot with our back turrets, and hopefully that'll do the trick. We did go ahead and smoke up at the same time because the carrier's hovering around here and keeping me spotted, and I don't want this Kansas to get a shot off on me. Now, why are we doing all of this and risking life and limb to kill the destroyers? Well, it's because they're the most valuable ship in a domination game. They can move around the map, they are highly concealed, they can capture objective points spot for their team, and do devastating amounts of damage to your battleships. They have to go. If you have a good carrier player, they should be harassing and spotting the destroyers, unlike the red carrier player here who's deciding instead to attack a couple of light cruisers down here, myself and my division mate. If your main job is hunting destroyers and you have a 9.5 second reload, that can lead to some problems. This is a very slow reload for a light cruiser. And again, that's why I would use refill station. Try to bring that damage output up a little bit because sometimes you might only get one chance at a destroyer getting them spotted. If they're a good DD player, you're not gonna get a lot of opportunities to shoot at them unless they're an open water Kabarosk gunboating or uh, Tashkent or something like that. But anyways, you have to make your, your chances count and uh, you need to bring up the DPM of this boat. Looking back at the game, left on this side, a Kansas and an Azuma, I believe, somewhere over there. The last red destroyer on the team was in B cap, so we're keeping that in mind, and we're uh, hopefully going to be headed his way really soon, but we have to get the Kansas off the board. Battleships and World of Warships are a hard counter 
to cruisers. Especially one as lightly armored as B-43 here, who has the worst armor scheme of any tier 7 cruiser. Cleveland, wrapped in 25mm of armor, looks like a dreadnought compared to B-43, so you simply have to hide from battleships. That's why earlier we didn't push straight into the cap. You must rely on stealth, striking from the shadows or you will die. This entire game so far, you can see that we've used this island in front of me to dictate who I let shoot at me. Honestly, if not for the carrier player, I probably would be at near full health right now. Now we do have smoke screens and we've been using them, we only have two left. But if you've noted this version of Belfast has short duration smokes, they are typically found on Royal Navy destroyers, they just last a short time and they dissipate. So it's probably best to incorporate some islands into your gameplay. Now, Belfast 43 has torpedoes. So in instances like this with a one-on-one -on -one with Azuma, you might think, hey, I could probably rush this guy and get him out of the match. But again, you have terrible armor and not very great speed. 32.5 knots is not very fast. You do not have a speed boost consumable. So chances are rushing a ship, they're going to have plenty of opportunities to shoot at you. Um, any battleship caliber shell at tier 6, tier 7, and legendary tier will tear right through your ship, really regardless of how you're angled or what you're doing. Azuma has 305s, I believe, and we could even look at Scharnhorst 283mm guns. They will overmatch you. So... It's just not a good ship to do aggressive things, and the Azuma is going to prove it to you right here. When I notice that he's looking at me with his guns, I start to turn in just to make myself a smaller profile, because we're not going to bounce anything. Um, but we were too slow on the draw and take a lot of damage. And I think Azuma actually has 310mm guns. Leave it to the IJN, always putting bigger guns on their boats. All right, so with the Azuma about to die, we have pretty much cleaned up this cap. Again, this I, I feel like this stuff goes without saying, guys, but I guess I have to say it. Notice we did not immediately sail to B cap or C cap at the beginning of the game. We stayed here to finish the job. We cleaned up the flank, we killed everything that was moving, and we got the cap. If you leave a ship alive on a flank and you sail away, they will simply take the cap from you and continue to accrue points against your team. So, always clean up your flank before leaving it. That is a big, big way to uh, win more games. Now we can start looking at B-Cap. We know there was a moss last spotted somewhere over here in this area. We still have the carrier to contend with, and then there is one cruiser... The next thing we definitely need to do, get B-Cap. We're up on points, yes, that's looking good. We're up on ships, that's looking good. But I have seen these games turn around very quickly. Looks like our battleship might die over here, and then that's going to even the odds up. My division mate's going to go north, so we're splitting up here. He's going to look for the carrier. I'm going to look for the DD and cap this point. Our health. Pretty critical looking right now. That is another huge downside to Belfast 43. Unlike the other tier 7 cruisers, we do not get heals. Well, let me explain. There are heals, but you have to give up your smoke screen in order to use them. And also, the heal is trash. <laughs> heals are good for 6400 a piece, bringing your effective health up only 12,000 when using refill station only having two heals. So this is not a British super heal like the Edinburgh and the Albemarle get. It's very average. It's not worth using at all. So we don't get to heal back any of this damage. Another downside, eh, kind of as I see it, is the AA performance. It's not that good, and that's being proven this game. Damage per second is 207, and while that is still way better than some, like Suzuya's 67, we're not getting a lot of planes shot down. We have five, and I feel like we've been harried by the carrier quite a bit. The best thing I could recommend, especially if you're getting focused by a powerful carrier like the Parsifal, use a smokescreen. You're probably not going to be able to just dodge, uh, so use smoke, get cover, or use your allies for a little extra AA coverage. 
So the mines was on life support, but we yoink the kill anyways. That's how the cookie crumbles. <laughs> um, and this will be a Kraken game. Uh, but yes. Okay, another notable thing with Belfast 43. You are going to have so much more fun if you play in a division. It doesn't hurt if your division mates also happen to be tryhard chads that can carry you and tow your sunk Belfast back to port, but really, having a destroyer to spot, or a CV, I guess, would help immensely. Really, you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any other ship in the game with the same tonnage or more. You don't have the armor for it. You don't have the agility or the speed to play an agile cruiser and kite and dodge and move around the map that way. Your best feature is stealth, and without a teammate to spot targets for you, you can quickly become useless or dead. So grab a div mate and go ham. Well, here we are showing my wonderful aiming prowess. <laughs> the uh, Belfast 43 has pretty floaty shells. I think they're like 840 meters per second in the air. It's not as bad as Atlanta or some of the other American ships, but it is definitely not very fast. So aiming takes a little bit to get used to. Now, one thing I haven't pointed out yet, and I did want to bring up, while Belfast 43 has a pretty slow reload, she does get a little buff over the original Belfast with shell damage. Not only that, but she gets 30 millimeter pins, so she does do a lot more damage in the regards of not shattering as many HE shells. But overall, guys, my div mate is going to murder the carrier here, and that will wrap up this game for us, which turned out to be a pretty good game. 3,300 base XP. I don't know what the record for this ship is. I doubt it's very high, to be 100% honest with you. But um, I still enjoy the ship. I enjoy it a lot more than the Flander. I really... Th yeah, okay, I won't say anything about the Flander. But I do enjoy the belfast 43 in a division i think she's a good support ship and a lot of fun and i've been enjoying her even though she is not the strongest ship out there but here's my take on that wargaming can't release bangers all the time if so things like the mines in the weimar being released would continually power creep everything else in the game ships like b43 need to exist so we can complain about them and then go play the mines all right, guys, I would appreciate it if you left a like on the video and comment down below what you think of B43. Be sure to subscribe for future content. I would love to see you around in the future. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.